So we talked about how when we run the hydraulics, most of the time the energy gets lost due to friction, right? And the other culprit for eating up our energy is the energy lost at the junctions. So what happens when the water flows through a junction structure? Um, the water mixes, changes direction, etc. And basically, we use this equation to come up or to quantify those losses. We multiply the velocity head times a k value. And that is just the bottom line of this presentation. The question is, what k value do I use? Well, um, we're going to take a look at that. In fact, there's lots of charts and different options, but uh, the bottom line is that as an engineer, your job is coming up with the right K. Um, okay, so the outlet loss is the difference in velocity heads between the pipe outlet and the downstream channel. That's basically um, the concept of uh, outlets or exit losses. You could have also transition losses. Basically, if you have a conduit that either gets bigger or smaller, most of the time you really, as it goes downstream, you want it to get bigger and bigger, not the other way around. But you never know, you might find funny things um, when you look at the way things are constructed. Mm. Um, but in any case, whenever the transition happens, you have to come up with a K value to account correctly for those losses. And most of the time, you don't input at an individual pipe what your minor losses would be, because again, it's mostly head losses. So where do you put these head losses uh, due to structures? Well, at the structures. So you double click on a manhole or a catch basin, and it says, how would you like me to account for the head losses here? And it gives you an array of options. You can say absolute head loss, standard, HEC 22, generic, enter your own curve, uh, whatever you feel comfortable with. So let's explore some of those. The absolute head loss method simply says, okay, at this structure, I know I lose one foot of energy, for example. Uh, the problem with the absolute head loss method is that regardless of the flow, the head loss would be the same. So if you have very little flows and you in, and you put in something like one foot, then you know it's going to make that basically subtract the one foot of energy at that location mm -hmm. and it might not be representative. In in reality, depending on the flow, you're gonna have a different you know, the more flow you have, the more head losses. So this is an option. Um, more typically, you see something like this, the standard head loss method. Mm. So again, it uses the same equation where we have a magical K multiplying the velocity head. And then you say what your K is, in this case, 0 0.5. You can look this up in Google and it tells you the K values um, to use for the standard head loss method. Um, in fact, uh, this is something that came from our books and it shows you if you have in a situation like this where you have a trunk line only with no bend at the junction, then use 0 0.5 for the standard um, coefficient. Uh, if you have something more convoluted like this, use 0 0.9. So it's a guide. Or more typically in the US anyway, uh, the HEC 22 energy method is utilized, it is based on laboratory results. It does not apply to drop structures. So if you do have a drop structure, you have to account for those losses differently. Um, and again, uses the same equation as all of the others. Uh, the velocity again being the velocity head uh, of the exit pipe. And here you don't even have to input the K value. You simply say, what is the benching method? So how is, you know, my structure, connect, structure connected to the uh, pipes around it? Is it depressed, flat, half benching? So simply you pick it from the drop down menu and we calculate those head losses for you.
You don't even need to know the equivalent. Um, the one thing with HEC 22 is that we had to make some special assumptions um, because the HEC 22 method is written with a limited range of applicability. So it didn't say, you know, what to do in the case where you have pressure, pressurized flow and, you know, we're trying to figure out the velocity there and it's, it's going to be different. So we kind of made, uh, made some assumptions um, to be able to use, for you to use that kind of a method. And this is one of them. Um, okay. In addition to that, there's the generic head loss method. Um, so you can say, uh, what is the downstream coefficient and the upstream coefficient? And we compute the head loss, multiplying the velocity head of the exit pipe by the downstream coefficient. And then we subtract the velocity head multiplied by the um, incoming pipe. So the incoming velocity with the upstream coefficient uh, is, is what we get subtracted. So you can do that as well. Mm. Or you can even get more fancy and in come up with your own flow versus head loss curves and input them in the software. Um, so if you have like, again, drop structures or complicated, not complicated, but different um, kind of structures, you could model those as well. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.